In the last lecture, we went into a lot of detail about how ECBA and the Fourth Amendment apply to email and other electronic messaging services. This lecture is a very quick explanation of how the same principles apply to other sorts of online services, including search engines, social networks, and cloud storage. First, to the extent any of these other online services offer messaging, it's covered by the same procedures we've already seen. Next, for prospective surveillance of an online service that isn't related to messaging, pretty much the only sort of order that comes up is the pen trap. And it's covered by the exact same rules as a pen trap for an email service. Investigators usually use pen traps in these contexts to collect session metadata, that is, logins and other interactions with the online service. Wiretap orders don't really come up, and the reason is straightforward. There aren't any messages to wiretap. As for retrospective surveillance, the SCA does have some differences in how it treats messaging and non-messaging services. The statute draws a distinction between an electronic communication service, that is, any sort of messaging service, and a remote computing service, which is a non-messaging service. Courts have greatly struggled in fitting online services, and even particular features of online services, into these two categories. Courts don't even agree on whether the two categories are mutually exclusive. I want to emphasize just two key differences in how the SCA treats remote computing services. First, the 180-day exception that we saw for email is always available. Under the SCA, investigators can always get content from a non-messaging service with just a deorder or a subpoena, so long as they eventually provide notice. Second, there is no statutory protection against the government for non-public services. Private non-messaging services under the SCA can be just subpoenaed for everything. All right, so under the SCA, non-messaging services receive less protection than messaging services. The good news is, under the Fourth Amendment, these other services are now treated the exact same as email. Following Warshock, if it's content, it's protected. That includes your searches on Google, your wall posts on Facebook, and your files on Dropbox. If it's not content, then it's not protected. The distinction between metadata and content for these services can be a little blurry, but it generally holds up pretty well. So, there are the rules for non-messaging online services. In the next lecture, we're going to look at how federal law applies to web browsing. And in particular, we're going to look at the mess courts have made when trying to distinguish between metadata and content.